Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. This is part four of creating a lure from scratch. And I think we've got this dry erase board smack full. And I'm going to go ahead and start erasing. And I'll just leave the one most important piece of information, which is the volume of the lure. Okay, so this little halo of a tail uh, was just representing the tail that I'm going to put on it, which is going to be a bristle brush tail. But for right now, we're going to leave it half naked like this. And I just want to show you what I need to figure out next. Now, if you look at this lure, you can see that it's pretty asymmetric when you look at a line that runs uh, horizontally across the lure. The reason the symmetry issue is important is that when you pull on this lure from a point let's just say that's where I put my ring. Ideally, that point should pull through a line that separates equal uh, areas from top to bottom across the line. Let me erase this funny face here. If I just put a dashed line right here, and it's running from the farthest point here and the farthest point here, the full length, you can quickly see that just by eye, this bottom portion has more area. Now, with the exception of crankbaits, lipless crankbaits or lipped crankbaits, this symmetry of uh, area on, on the top and the bottom is really important for swim baits, twitch baits, and any bait that you're depending on the body to cause a swimming action. So what happens when you have unequal areas is there'll be a higher drag on the area with the most area. And the farther that is from the center here, from the point of pull, the more leverage it, it'll have to be able to wobble that lure up onto its side. So the key is to figure out a way to get a line that gives you equal areas on both sides. First, I'm going to break up the lure in equally spaced segments. And it's 14 inches long, so I'm just going to do it inch at a time. Okay. At each one of these points, I'm going to measure where the exact center is of that lure. So I'll do the middle one so you can see what I'm talking about. This segment is eight and three quarters wide, so it's four and three eighths. So measuring four and three eighths from either side is your center. So I'm going to do that for all these points and I'll mark it with a green marker and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got my, my contour drawn in having done all those measurements. And remember at the end of the lure, the very middle of the lure is the farthest end. So I've marked that in green as well. I'm going to take a, a drafting curve and uh, curve this in as best I can. And then I'll show you where I'm going to go. So you can see this line that I just drew undulates a bit. The next step is to draw a line starting at this end and allowing equal areas above the purple line and below the purple line. To do that easily on the dry erase board, the best way to do this is with a string. So I've got this string fastened right there at the end point, the farthest point to the, to the tail, and I'm going to run a line on this string where I have small areas above and below the line. And from here, it's easier to eyeball equivalence, right? So this area is a bigger triangle, looks like about the same as this wide flat area. And then I have a little more on top here. So I wanna create a little more on the bottom here to equate for that. And so I think right there is pretty doggone close to what I would call equal areas top and bottom. So this right here is my best guess of where to put that eye so I have a good balance point to tow with. I know it seems like a lot, but this is really important. And before you make a mold, you need to have that eye in the right place. Else you're going to be doing a bunch of experimentation to figure out why your lure won't retrieve very well. On the last video, we got the lure to the point where it was nearly ready. I 
went ahead and finished sanding it and I have uh, clear coated it if you can see hopefully it's got a really nice finish very shiny it's uh, clear coated with UV resin at this point I'm ready to make a mold and I like to use Lego blocks and I like to use them for a couple of reasons obviously they're really versatile they're reusable but a couple of things that maybe that aren't completely obvious they give you a square corner every time and they create square and parallel sides as you come up with it that makes it super easy to um, to calculate the volume and this way you save a lot of material Okay, it's the next day, the silicone is hard, and we're ready to pull the clay bed out of this and expose the other side of the lure. Okay, well, it's been a day. This is solidified. Let's open this thing up. Hopefully, I didn't screw this one up. Wow. At least it's not stuck together. Not yet, anyway. A little bit. Beautiful.
Perfect there. Uh, come on, baby. How about this other side? All right, beautiful. Okay, so we've got two good halves. Okay, so now we have a good mold to work with. I need to get the internal wire harness made, just the initial one, and then we need to do a quick calculation to see how much weight I need to put in it. We'll, we'll pour our first one, and we'll just do a water tank test really quickly.